Michaela was diagnosed in December 2017. She was falling. Um, she kept falling at the childcare centre, but we couldn't quite pinpoint what happened to her um, until the symptoms, the more obvious symptoms, just like she couldn't focus um, on her writing. Initially, GPs couldn't quite pinpoint what happened until we saw a different doctor and had a full checkup. Um, and then there's something not quite right, then we were sent to the emergency. And then later on with the scans and etc. then she was diagnosed with DIPG. It was something, even though I am a medical health professional, but it was something that I had never heard of. It was a shock. It was like the whole world collapsed. It was very challenging. It was very difficult, emotionally and physically as well. So looking back, you know, in the first three months or so, it was the the toughest time um, to deal with. Uh, we didn't know how, um, how much time that we've got left. And at the same time, because with all the medical appointments, uh, treatments and etc., it was very physically draining as well. Knowing your child potentially may pass away in the next couple of months time, is something that no, none of the parents can be prepared for. So back in the time, um, there were very few families that we could reach out to. We only met one or two families um, because I guess also there weren't any uh, formal DIPG group back in the days. There might be some foundations that's sort of like, you know, very low. They weren't very prominent, so we had to reach out to them. And of course, we had the, um, the government or charity-based uh, cancer groups like uh, Red Kite, uh, Cancer Council, um, Starlight. You know, we were very blessed to have all those organizations to help us. We had to make our own decisions based on what we have, what the information that we have at that time. So initially, when she was diagnosed, she was started with a high dose of um, steroid. That was basically to control the swelling in the brain, but it also comes down with some side effects as well. So that will make her become very hungry all the time. It also made her become very angry as well. That also affected her sleeping pattern as well. She was also um, with radiation therapy as well. Radiation therapy was challenging for the whole family emotionally because she had to be under anesthetic. She was only four and she wasn't allowed to move during the radiation time. We tried to reach out families that um, potentially we can get a bit of advice. We also set up a, a, a Facebook page for Michaela as well so we could get um, people reaching out to us at the same time. I was helped by other families uh, back in the days so that's the minimum I can do is to share our experience to them. We, are, we were pretty much the only family that we knew, well, another two families that we knew um, back in the days. Then later on, then we found there are more families, there are more newcomers, including Maddie as well. Um, then we tried to form a little community within ourselves. It's a very unique, very tight, very um, emotionally protected um, group that we can share our emotions, our frustration, our difficulty, all the, all the challenges that we have just within the DIPG communities. But out there, there, were, there weren't many people knowing this condition, even to this day. So we hope that more people understand or knowing this condition, the more that we can raise the funding from the government to do more research. Because statistically, there was very little chance that these little children will survive. We need more research, more understanding of what DIPG is, how we can tackle this problem. And literally, back in the days, except for the radiation uh, treatments that Michaela went through, there were no other options. And they're all under trial. And now, thankfully, there were a few little options that potentially people, uh, kids can try. But back in the day, there's nothing. We mentally prepared that she wouldn't be able to live long. You know, living up to now, five, six years after diagnosis, it's a very rare situation around the world. And not only that she's living, she only, she's only well as well. So she's physically well, um, she can do whatever she likes to do. So we are very blessed in that sense. But at the same time, it's, it's to us, it's, it's always there. It's always that it could happen again. Well, thankfully, in the last couple of years, she has been kept well. So um, that makes it a bit easier that way. Um, but you know, we don't know what lies ahead of us. The support is very important. I've seen a lot of families that they keep everything inside and I find that that was very difficult to deal with. Especially for some cultures, um, they don't want to talk to people about all these things. But that made it really difficult for them to go through. And I find that right from the beginning, we set up the Facebook group, we try to reach out to people and people reach out to us as well. That made this journey a lot easier.
Well, it's difficult, but a little bit easier that way. Over this journey, there are lots of very difficult decisions to be made. Even though there could be some end of life decisions that you need to deal with. It's very hard um, to make that call. But I've seen a lot of families that they regret what they have made, like what they have done or decided to do. And I always try to encourage them that you have done so well. Don't be regretted because you have made the decisions that based on whatever information you have in hands. You always try to make the best decision you can for your child. It is hard, but we've been through six years so it is doable. Yes, it's hard, but step by step, yes, it can be done.